Hello everyone, my name is Jason and this is Redfish Bluefish. It's time for a new video to let you know what I've been working on. Two years ago I began looking for project space and as you all know I'm an aquarist and a serious fish keeper. I love my planted tanks and my aquascapes. I also produce plant tissue cultures in a small lab space that I built out and beyond that I've never had the space or the facilities to grow or expand. During this two-year search, I found plenty of available properties which were suitable, but location after location fell through for one reason or another, and the affair dragged on and on until I essentially gave up. And then a strange thing happened almost as soon as I stopped looking for that perfect location. We found our home. We've had a nice look at the grounds here at Green Bank Farm. Let's look at the space. Welcome to the new Redfish Bluefish. Hello everyone, welcome, 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 one and all, to Friday. We made it to Friday. It's a very smoky Friday here where I am. Um, hopefully the audio is going to be coming through well. I am in my new commercial space and um, it's largely empty, so it's, uh, it's pretty echoey in here. Hopefully the audio is something we can deal with. Before I jump into the top 10 early birds and all that stuff, I saw a comment from my good buddy, um, Danny Ken Aquatics. Buddy, you are always welcome up uh, to come to this island anytime, my friend. We really enjoyed having you. and Come on up and, and drag Danny up with you, my friend. So before I get started, this is, this is a big live stream, guys. This has been a long time in the making. 
I don't want to forget my host duties, and I want to give the shout outs that we do um, every live stream. And in case you're new here, I did see a couple of new names I didn't recognize. We used to give like full on shout outs to everybody in the room, and uh, it just took a long, long time to get through everyone. So we started a tradition here. Uh, we do the top 10 early bird getting those worms shout outs. Those are the, the first 10 people in chat before the stream even began. This time, in first place, we have Dragon Lair. Second place, we have Streetwise. Third place, we have Jeff Chambers. And from there, we have Aquamane. Next, we have my good buddy, Joe Clyde. Then we have Cichlids23. What's going on, brother? Then we have Cody Sun. Next, we have someone I don't recognize, but thank you so much for coming by. In eighth place, we have One Dirty Platy. In ninth place, we have Meek AM. What's going on, Meek AM? And in 10th place, good friend of mine, and actually just so happens to be a moderator here at Redfish Bluefish, Aqua Balls. And guys, thank you so much. If I didn't mention you in the top 10, thank you anyways so much for coming by and hanging out with us. As you could tell from the lead-in video and from my little speech that I gave, um, this has been a, a long time in the making. I have been uh, looking for a suitable place uh, for project work and all kinds of stuff for going on two years and like I said um, you know location after location I jump through hoops I you know fill out all the paperwork run around and get quotes for everything under the sun insurance included and uh, you know one thing or another would always uh, kind of ruin it you know it, it fell over every time until like I said by accident this place so let me jump into chat and see what I'm missing. It looks like we have 23 people in here. Thanks so much guys for coming by. I don't think I have any actual comments. I don't have any ats at this point. Uh, thank you very much Mika M. Mika M with a comment saying nice place. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. Streetwise is going to come DJ. Awesome. You can come DJ anytime buddy. <laughs> Um, I saw an earlier comment, um, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> yeah, we got a comment from Jeff Chambers here saying, yeah, the wife must have kicked him out. Yeah, almost, <laughs> almost. I'm lucky she hasn't so far. Hey, Hat Trick Farms, thanks so much for coming by. All right, thanks so much, Cichlids23. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic place. So I'll tell you guys a little bit more about it. Um, Peplin Creek Aquatics, no, I am not going to be making cheese. <laughs> there is a, uh, a fantastic cheese shop that's here uh, on Green Bank Farm. So let me, get, let me tell you guys a little bit about this place. Okay, you saw in the footage, there's a big, you know, Whidbey's Green Bank Farm 1904. Okay, so this place, this farm really was originally built and founded in 1904, right here. Um, it was a very successful farm. Um, they got their start raising cattle. They had many, many heads of cattle, hundreds of heads. And I want to say um, in 1930s, 1940s, somewhere in there, uh, unfortunately tuberculosis uh, hit the farmer's uh, herd and like wiped them all out. Um, luckily, the farmer um, thought quickly on his toes and he very quickly turned this massive farm back in 1930s, 1940s, turned it into the largest Loganberry farm in the United States. So if you don't know what a Loganberry is, it's a hybrid between a raspberry and a blackberry. So it's, a, it's quite tasty stuff. Anyway, uh, this farm for many, many years was very successful as a, a massive Loganberry farm. and. Um, Unfortunately, you know, I, I believe it was in the early 2000s, um, you know, the financial troubles that hit so many, basically this entire property um, was in big trouble. And the plan was some massive, very wealthy developers were going to come in here and basically raise everything. We're going to knock it all down and turn it into housing developments. Um, luckily, residents here on the island said uh no you're not and basically they formed a trust they all got together they pulled their resources and they formed a trust 
And uh, some people reach very deep into their pockets. Many people reach very deeply into their pockets. And they uh, pulled their money and they were able to buy this entire place from underneath uh, the wealthy developers to save it. Um, fast forward, um, it's grown, it's expanded. So basically what this place is, it's still a functional farm on the outskirts. Um, it has three buildings, buildings uh, A, B, and C. Uh, building A is, is a rather large business. It's Whidbey Pies. Um, they make pies, they do a lot of baking, a lot of stuff. There's plenty of picnic tables out there. It's a really nice place. Then we have building B, that's where there's a wine and cheese shop, some other shops. And then this is C. And uh, this uh, C, you know, the building C was built, which is where I'm at right now. I'm in building C, suite 103. Uh, this was built, I want to say, 12 to 15 years ago. So this is by far the newest addition on the farm, as you can probably tell. So there's a little bit there. It's, this place is basically run and administered by the Port of Coopville. Uh, Coopville is the uh, northern, as the city just north of here. I'm in Green Bank, Washington. Just north of us is Coopville, Washington. So the city basically stepped in and they, they put, pitched in a lot of money themselves. And uh, so different, like I think it's the Port of Coopville runs and, and more or less owns this, this part. And then the outlying uh, wetlands and the, the nature, you know, preserve around it and all the gardens, they're owned and, and run by other entities. But this is essentially, really it's a nonprofit is what it is. Um, you saw the gardens that I was shooting footage of. Those are totally public gardens. They're free around the year. Anyone can come here and stroll around the ponds. Um, I didn't shoot any footage of it, but there are wetlands and there are wetland trails that go through it. And there's also a, um, I guess you would call it a bird observation platform. There's a platform up there that kind of sits above the wetlands and you can sit up there and check out all the, the red winged blackbirds and the finches and all of that cool stuff. So there's tons of stuff to do here besides just the shop that is just now in the making. A little bit of history there for you guys behind Green Bank Farm. Yes, indeed, Cichlids 23, no more concrete. Yeah, we don't need any apartment complexes. Not here. There, there are plenty of those already. Thank you very much. Yes, Jeff Chambers, they absolutely have a garden club. They have a massive garden club. <laughs> Get digging. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much, Color Guppies. Appreciate you coming by. And you know, as luck would have it, my backup camera is actually running at the moment. So... Let me um, flip the camera around. I'm not going to show you everything, guys. It, it's for the most part, it's empty. A bunch of aquariums in here on the ground. I actually have 30 20 gallon longs all stacked up on the ground here. I'll show you those. But I wanted to show you something, another little treat for you. I wanted to show you some custom lids that I made. Now, um, before I show them to you, I'll let you know what they're made out of. They are made out of clear polycarbonate, so a very thin sheet of polycarbonate. Um, the idea is, is that my aquariums, my stock aquariums, I personally like to keep my stock aquariums, you know, with, with, especially with animals in them, I like to keep them fully covered if I can, or I want them fully open, like nothing in between. What I mean is, I don't like lids that are like two or three pieces of plastic or glass and they're hinged and, you know, no. I want it all closed, you know, all covered, or I want it all uncovered, nothing in between. Because if it's uncovered, I'm either planting something or I'm getting animals out of there. And, you know, with it totally uncovered, I have full, quick access to anything in the aquarium. So with that said, let me see if I can switch over the backup camera and um, show you guys a little something, something. Hey, look at that. It's working. Let me see if I can flip it around, guys. So basically, guys, the idea is, is that, um, like I said, 
I either want it completely covered or completely uncovered. And what I've done is I've gotten this special kind of uh, epoxy that's made for gluing um, wood to uh, plastics, all kinds of plastics. And um, so that's what I did. I glued this on here and um, it's definitely not ever coming off. And I've actually made 30 of these. They're cut totally perfectly, perfect width, so that they actually sit recessed down into the little lips on top of the aquariums. So they just slide right on, right off, no messing around. Let me show you what I mean. So as you guys can tell, uh, there's plenty of work to be done in here. I think I see some questions popping up. Thank you, Aquaballs. I appreciate that, my friend. Am I hiring? Yeah, yeah, I wish. <laughs> that is a lot of aquariums. Yeah, that is, those are a 30, 20 gallon longs. You can see most of them still have stickers on them, in fact. Um, I got a lot of work to do in here. I think I saw a question from Jeff Chambers. Uh, Jeff Chambers asked, is this gonna be a retail store or just a home away from home? Yes. The answer is yes. So I knew that this question was gonna come up pretty soon. Um, people are gonna say, wow, that's cool. What is it? Well, let me tell you what this place used to be. Basically, this place used to be a showroom slash gallery. Um, for really hoity-toity, very expensive, fine home furnishings. Um, they did, the, the previous business did very, very well, um, and they outgrew this space within a matter of months, and they moved off somewhere. I'm not sure where they moved to. And as far as the other places, uh, the other spaces in Building C, all of them are empty, um, and that's very unfortunate, but I'm seeing it all over the place in the United States. The current pandemic has basically really impacted the small business like you wouldn't believe. Well, I guess you wouldn't believe. You, you guys are living the same reality. So that's kind of what this place used to be. And I knew that people, when they saw it, they would say, it's real, it's real pretty, it's, it's nice and everything, but what is it? Well, without sounding pretentious, I don't wish to sound pretentious, um, this is basically a shop studio that's exactly what it is it's a shop and it's a studio it's a gallery as well um i don't want to give too much away um i i hate to do it to you but um you're gonna have to wait and see you're gonna have to wait and see what it what it uh what it turns into but i do promise you one thing guys i have decided this a long time ago um months ago um, I was planning to kind of just work really hard behind the scenes and get this all done, all set up, and then drop it on YouTube like that. And then several months ago, after speaking to some friends, uh, some people I care, ver I care very much about, you know, their opinion, um, I decided, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do uh, something that almost nobody does uh, when they're basically setting up a shop. Um, whether it's a brick and mortar shop or some kind of wholesale or online shop or whatever the case is, rarely do people show every kind of step of the way. I want to do that. I want to do that as much as possible. And that's why I've decided to kind of release this as part one. Part two will be next Friday. So let me jump in there and uh, see what I'm missing in chat.
I see a comment from um, Cichlids23. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. The lids are tight. Yeah, I really appreciate. Um, I really appreciate that, man. These. So if you guys ever want to get um, lids like this made, um, you can go online. Uh, they're a little. It's the same price that you would pay at a storefront if you do it online. But online, you're gonna have to pay for shipping. If you live in a major metropolitan area, you might find a uh, a company near you named Tap Plastics. Tap T A P, as in you know tap tap tap. Tap Plastics. Um, they sell all kinds of plastic stuff. They sell um, really thin clear polycarbonate, colored col uh, polycarbonate, thick. Um, they sell buckets. I mean, anything if it's made out of uh, plastic, they probably sell it. Luckily, there's one here in Linwood, which is basically local to me. It's just a short ferry ride across from me. So I ordered uh, 30 of these tops and uh, went over, you know, paid for them on the phone and went over and picked them up. Got some of that special uh, plastic to wood glue and affixed those little uh, carved oak knobs uh, all over the top of them. So I'm very happy with it. It's, uh, I've tried it out at the house. Um, they totally stop evaporation like there's no practically no evaporation going on with those guys on and uh yeah they, they work they work absolutely fine yes uh, absolutely jeff chambers i appreciate that comment uh, jeff says no nah, dude you got to show us how it's done it's way better and you can inspire people to do the same i appreciate that man uh, that's that's what i want to do um i want to you know share whatever i can with you guys along the way um, not just up to the point to where we're quote unquote open, um, but beyond that, uh, I want to share you uh, share with you guys some um, collaboration that's going to be going on here between me and other uh, creators, other YouTube creators. Uh, I want to share the uh, the um, basically the starting and the growing of uh, what I hope will be an uh, an aquatic nature gallery here, some nature aquariums, some some pretty planted tanks, some aquascapes. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna see where it goes from there. I got a comment from One Dirty Platy. Uh, congrats! This is your long-term goal. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, thanks very much, uh, uh, One Dirty Platy. Thank you very much for that uh, kind comment. And Muppet929 as well. Thank you so much. And it looks like we've got Chev Birkinshaw in here. Chev, I appreciate you coming by, my friend. I don't think I've seen you here before, but thanks so much for coming by. Uh, we've got a little live stream going on. Um, I really am shocked that this backup um, camera is working. See, let me switch over to my regular webcam and show you guys. That's a regular webcam. That's just a Logitech webcam. It's not even 4K capable. It's just 1080. Um, and then my backup, I mean, I've had so much, so many problems with it, but out here, it's just flawless. Amazing. You know what? Let's walk over here. I want to show you guys one more thing. Now, my microphone is here where my, you know, where I'm sitting now. I'm going to walk way over there. Um, so I'm not going to talk while I'm over there. Let me explain what I'm going to show you before I go over. Um, I've decided to put up this privacy curtain uh, in front of the entire front door. Now, the front doors are, are glass and wood. Uh, kind of double doors. I'm not sure what you call them, but they also have uh, side windows. So um, easily the full, I guess that you would say uh, about 30 to 35 percent of the entire front wall is glass, actually. And um, you know the situation, the the the, um, the way that this place um, is situated, the way that it faces, the direction it faces. We do get a lot of light coming in from that way, so I had to do something before we even get water in here because um, I don't dig on algae. So let me go over there and uh, and show you guys what's up. Uh, before I do, uh, I have a, a comment from Cichlids23. Let me get it. Cichlids23 asks, what are the dimensions of that space? Um, I'm not actually totally sure what the dimensions are. Um, this space is approximately 1,000 square feet just a little under a thousand square feet. This place, in fact, this shop is the same size as Aquarium Co-op. Now, the difference is that Aquarium Co-op is skinny and really long, and this place is perfectly square. It's, it's a large square area. Um, so that's, that's a difference there. But it's right at approximately a thousand square feet. 
So let me walk over and show you guys this privacy curtain screen that I put up. It's semi-see-through, but it's really thin. And then after that, um, as long as the wireless signal to this uh, wireless camera stays strong, I'll step out just out front and show you guys a little look around. It's really smoky, so I'm not sure how good the view is going to be tonight. Hold on a second, guys. You know what, guys? I actually have kind of a good idea. Um, what I'll do is I'll walk from uh, one, co uh, one wall of the shop to the other, and we'll just count them off. That'll give you an idea of how wide it is. So, all the way over here. There we go. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen and a half. It's about sixteen and a half paces across. And the same goes, you know, for the other way. So had a little look outside there. Um, it's, I don't know if you could tell, it's still really smoky. Uh, it's nowhere near as smoky here as it actually is uh, on the mainland over in Seattle and Everett and you know, Linwood. And they are just really getting hammered with smoke. Hey, Recon's Aquariums, I really appreciate you coming by and hanging out, buddy. Get some rest, uh, but thanks for coming by, man. Uh, hope to see you next Friday. So, um... Let's see what kind of comment I have here, uh, if, I'm, if I'm missing any comments. I don't know if you guys can hear me counting off as I was walking. Basically, it's 16 and a half paces across each way. So it's, it's right at about approximately 1,000 square feet. Um, as you can see, I've got track lighting going on in here, all kinds of cool stuff going on in here. So pretty nice. Um, really, uh, really hope to do another live stream very soon from here during the daytime so um, I can show you guys kind of, you know, outside so you can see. It's really nice. Got a comment here from One Dirty Platy. Um, I'm not familiar with the area. Will this be a storefront or more of a distribution type facility? Um, yes, both. It will be a storefront, absolutely. Yes, it's, it's a brick and mortar, actual proper local fish store. Um, things right now are very weird, obviously, because of the ongoing pandemic. Um, a lot of shops uh, right now, especially in my area, are only doing um, online or kind of knock at the door, call first, pick up at the door, curbside stuff. So that is probably what I'm going to be doing, at least in the beginning. Um, we were doing really well with uh, the sickness, you know, the pandemic that's been going on. We were doing really well. We made a lot of progress here. Uh, and I don't mean just on Whidbey Island. Um, I mean in the, in the state, in Washington State. And now we're starting to get 
Um, we're starting to get illness uh, popping up here and there again, so they're kind of having to clamp it back down again. Um, so with that said, you know, I am opening this shop uh, at a very strange time. Um, with that said, um, I think it's also an, an opportune moment as well. Um, let, let's face it, guys. We have not even really seen the, um, the fallout um, hit local mom and pop shops yet. Um, because, uh, thankfully, in a lot of areas, a lot of states, uh, talking about it federally, uh, there's a moratorium on evictions right now, which is great. But sooner or later, the bill comes due, and you do have to pay it sooner or later. So what I'm getting at is um, there's something, there's something, there's, there's some logic behind what I'm doing uh, and why I'm doing it now. And that's because I, I truly do think that when this thing fully hits and, like I said, the bills come due, you know, you got to pay up. I fear that uh, the financial full fallout is, is going to be bad. It's going to be drastic and, and it's going to hit, um, it's going to hit mom and pop hard. It's not going to hit Petco. It's not going to hit PetSmart. They'll be fine. Aquion, they'll survive. What I'm talking about is Normal Town USA. Um, they're going to be the victims because they always are. And I'm sorry for getting dark and kind of depressing a little bit. I'm just kind of trying to explain my reasoning uh, behind this decision of what's going on here. Hello. Sorry about that. I had a little uh, technical difficulty there. Click the wrong button. Oh dear. Let's see, what, what am I missing in chat? I'm missing all kinds of things. Hey, Big J's Fish Keeper, welcome. Welcome, man, appreciate you coming by. Looks like we have 32 people in here. That's awesome, guys. I can't appreciate you enough. So another comment here from One Dirty Platy. I am in Canada, so I can only speak to what's going on here, but from speaking to my LFS, things are booming. Problem is getting stock. Yes, yeah, stock is a major problem uh, right now for a lot of people. Um, I've spoken about it on my channel before, and um, I'll, I'll share it again. Um, I used to work uh, for and with the U.S. government for many years uh, overseas. Uh, I lived in Asia and you name it, uh, East Asia, Southeast Asia, all over the place for many years. Uh, my, my wife is, in fact, uh, from the island of Sumatra. She's Indonesian. Uh, so we're a very international kind of family, and, you know, I lived overseas for, for so long. I really got to know a lot of people in the industry, uh, a lot of people in uh, Southeast Asia, East Asia especially. And I have a lot of contacts, and I've been working on a lot of things. I know a lot of people are having a lot of problems getting fish and animals right now, plants especially. Plants are really tough. Luckily, I have some help with that. Um, so you're just going to have to stay tuned and see where I'm going with that. See some of the cool stuff that's going to be happening here and some of the cool stuff that's going to be coming in here because there's going to be some very neat stuff. Enough of that. So guys, someone jump in a chat. Please tell me how your week's going. I've just been yeah, 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 yeah all night. Tell me what's going on, guys. Don't leave me hanging here. A comment here uh, from Mika M. What a place. Post-pandemic people will love it. Yeah, I appreciate that. I really do. Um, you know, the great thing about um, Green Bank Farm is, well, it, it's a bad, bad part of it, but it's a good part of it. Uh, this area is very seasonal. So Green Bank Farm is super seasonal. Um, spring and summer, it is hopping. I mean, there are tons of people out here from Oregon, Idaho, California, all over, all over the U.S. They come out for the wine tasting, you know, the gardens, the, the cheese shop, the, all the cool stuff that we have going on out here. Um, so, I hope to have this place eventually opened up with uh, an amazing uh, nature aquarium gallery for people to come in and kind of enjoy and learn about planted tanks and learn about aquascapes and fish keeping and nature aquariums. Um, what better way to introduce people to this, you know, if they wander into this shop that, that really looks more like a gallery than anything else. And it's got a bunch of gorgeous planted tanks and that sort of thing here. That's sort of what I'm going to be working on, among other things. 
Aqua balls, a comment from Aqua balls. Your back is hurting from doing water changes, man. Oh man, you gotta get a uh, you gotta get a python, buddy. You gotta get one of those pythons and hook it up to your uh, your sink or something. Yeah, if you're uh, or, or maybe your back's hurting from bending over doing all those water changes. Your tank's down low. Yeah, that that's never fun, man. When you when you gotta when you gotta do that stuff. Hey, Damian Markham, welcome. Thanks for coming by, my friend. Well, you know what I just noticed, guys? I think we may have gotten a new subscriber. Let me see. Hey, yep, we did. How about that? Well, thank you so much, Mohammed Rizayat, and welcome to Redfish Bluefish. Jump on in, the water's fine. Bunch of great people here. We meet up every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific. That's 11 p.m. Eastern. We talk about aquascapes. We talk about planted tanks. We talk about fish, fish breeding, fish keeping, all that stuff. Hope to see you there. Nice aqua balls. Yeah, bro, you got to come up. You got to make sure you're here for the opening barbecue. Actually, man, aqua balls. George, if you show up, I I've seen how you barbecue, man. I might have to put you to work if you come up here, man. I I'll hand you the spatula. I'll hand you the, the lighter, the charcoal, all the, all the chicken, all the beef. And you fire it up, man. Oh dear. Uh, comment from Mika M. Uh, almost thought it was a winery slash distillery at first sight. Yes, it used to be a winery. Yeah, there was a winery here uh, for many years, um, and that's where that massive wine barrel out front comes from. That's a, that's a leftover from those days. So they decided to put up there as as kind of a tribute to those the bygone era. Comment from Cichlids23, you know, um, Cichlids23 asked, are you bringing your mad scientist lab up here? No, I will not be. Um, that is going to stay, well, it's not going to be, hmm, i got to be careful. The lab is not going to be staying where it is because it is already not where it was. It is somewhere else. And... Let's just say that the lab is very, very busy. I'm spending a lot of time in the lab. Lots. And we'll leave it there. Hey, look at that. We got my good buddy from junior high school, high school slash childhood in here, Kurt Chetchuk. What's going on, Kurt? Kurt asked, what is the target date for the opening? Uh, that is very much a moving target, Kurt, to be honest with you, because um, the current pandemic has all kinds of supply chains totally jacked up. Um, for instance, you can find all the 10 gallon aquariums you want in the world. Uh, anything larger than that, good luck. Because there is a glass shortage right now. Now, uh, Aquion has plenty of really thin glass that they use to make your five and a half and your 10 gallon aquariums. Anything thicker than that, there's a major run on it right now, thanks to the pandemic. So, it's, it's pretty crazy. It, it's, these are weird times right now. I've never seen anything like it. Um, not that I have to tell you guys that. What do you guys know about these weird times, right? <laughs> oh, dear. Shev Birkinshaw is listening in from Australia. Wow, Shev, I really appreciate that, man. That is awesome. I appreciate you tuning in from the land down under. That is sweet. Oh dear, um, one dirty platy with a comment. Wine, fish, cheese, fish, why not? You know, red fish, blue fish, wine, fish, cheese, fish? Fishes and loaves. Hmm, we could do something like that. <laughs> I'm just joking, guys. Oh dear, pardon me while I, I feed the beast. I am, uh, I, uh, I, I do use an electronic cigarette. This is nicotine. Um, I was an actual filthy, dirty little smoker for many, many years, and uh, I gave up smoking successfully um, a long, long time ago, and I'm, I'm slowly uh, tuning it back, my nicotine intake via my e-cigarette. I'm not there yet. Hey, Big City Betas, welcome. Thanks for coming, Amber. Amber's got a comment. Hope everyone in chat is having a wonderful night. Uh, we are, and I hope you are too. Hope you and, you and Joseph are... Uh, Staying out of trouble? Dragon Lair with a comment. Salmon cream cheese dip for me. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, Dragon Lair, you're on to something, my friend. It's got to be smoked salmon, though, please. Smoked salmon cream cheese? Oh, dear. Pardon me. 
So you know what, guys? Um, I will show you one other thing. I don't know if you caught it. Um, we'll talk about a little something else here. I live on South Whidbey Island. Uh, it is uh, just across the water from what we colloquially refer to as the GSA, the Greater Seattle Area, which is huge. It's massive. It basically, <laughs> it's, it's, it's huge. Um, I'm just across the water from that. Now, if you're anywhere in the Greater Seattle Area, and you get some tap water out of the, you know, out of the faucet, and you run a TDS meter, you know, through it. You check the pH, all that. You'll realize that Seattle has very soft water, very, very soft water, much like uh, the New England area, parts of New England, Boston, Cape Cod. They have also very, very soft water. Seattle has, in the greater Seattle area, very soft water. I do not. Um, this island, uh, Whidbey Island, uh, is not from here. Uh, basically. Millions of years ago, uh, a huge glacier came down from the north and carved out the entire Puget Sound. And this glacier was like, you wouldn't believe how huge and how thick it was. It was more than a mile thick is how huge this thing was. It was so heavy that it carved out the entire Puget Sound and basically got cut in half by the Olympic Peninsula here. And the half that kind of peeled off and went our way melted and deposited sand and rocks and stuff, which is Whidbey Island. So this island was actually more or less deposited here by glaciers. Um, crazy, I know. So the sand and the rock and stuff that is here is not from here. So if you measure my water, it's incredibly hard because there's tons of sand, limestone, and all kinds of stuff like that going on here. Um, so with that said, well, if you have a fish store and you're a really big plant nerd and you love your tropical nano fish, they like soft water, man. They do not dig hard water. So that's something I got to deal with. So I'll show you one thing I'm going to use to deal with this with the backup camera. Now, I won't talk while I'm over there. I won't need to. You'll know exactly what you're looking at when you see it. And then I'll jump back over here and we'll get back into chat. Stand by. There we are. Sorry for the zigzagging around, but there is stuff everywhere in here. I have to be careful where I walk, because if I'm not careful, I'll uh, trip and smash my face. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever seen one of those before. That is called an IBC tote. They come in two sizes. Well, they actually come in a lot of configurations. Now, there are two primary sizes that they come in. One is 275 gallons, and that's what that is. That's a 275 gallon IBC tote that's new. And then they make a 330 gallon IBC tote as well. Um, I was going to go with the 330, and I kind of did the math. Nah, 275 is going to be better. It's ba they're basically the same size, but a 330 is like a full, I think it's a full foot taller. And I didn't like that. That'd be too tall. So. Went with a 275 and, uh, hey, appreciate it, Catfish Terry. Got a comment here from Catfish Terry saying, nice room. I appreciate it, my friend. 
This is the new shop slash studio. We're working on uh, a lot of things are going to be coming out of this space and um, there's going to be a lot of collaboration. There's going to be a lot of things going on here uh, between myself and other YouTubers um, as I begin to um, begin to spin this thing up. I'm going to be doing some really cool programs, things between Redfish, Bluefish, the business, and the fish keeping public. Things that no one, let me say that again, no one is doing and has done. And I'll leave it at that. It's going to be really cool. Um, I cannot wait to drop that. But we're, we're not ready for that yet. I'd say we're maybe a month away from draw, doing a big reveal on that. So, let me jump back into chat. Um, yes. Back to the hard water thing. I'm sorry, I, I digressed. Um, back to the hard water thing. We have very, very, very hard water on Whidbey Island. Um, out of the tap, uh, it's anywhere from 8.0 to 8.2. Easy. Um, TDS can be... At my house, the TDS is about, about 250 out of the tap. Now, out here, it's even worse. It's about 300. So, it's very, very hard water. Um, but... I have an incredibly high efficiency RO unit that does 1,200 gallons per day. It's very high efficiency, not cheap. So that is basically what that uh, 275 gallon IBC tote is for. That is going to be where, um, where we make RO water into. So I wanted to uh, touch on something. I, I, I meant to talk about it earlier. I want to give some mad props to this place, to Green Bank Farm and the visionaries that helped to make this place happen. You remember in the first part of the video that I did, um, you'll see that I, I, you, you saw some solar panels. We produce our own electricity here. We don't need anyone. We don't need anyone's electricity. In fact, we produce so much electricity here that we send it back up the, wa uh, the wire to Puget Sound Energy. So that's number one. Number two, we have our own water source because we have a deep water well that is fed by an aquifer. So that's number two. We have our own water. Number three, we actually truly do have a, a very expensive state-of-the-art septic system that actually batches huge uh, amounts of uh, wastewater up a massive hill up there and puts it into a leach field and the leach field comes down and the crops use it so it's it's a really really great system here i guess what i'm getting at is this place is actually like a city it's like a little tiny city we don't need any other utilities here we produce our own electricity we have our own water source Sewage, not a problem. We can deal with that for, you know, six to nine months before we need assistance with that. So this place is really great. And I can't wait to um, do some more here and do some more recordings and really peel back the onion skin layers on this place and show you some of like the, the Audubon Society birding trails and all the cool stuff here. In the future, I really hope I can get some of you guys to come out and, uh, and visit, um, not just for the shop and not just for me, just for the experience of visiting historic Green Bank Farm. It's just something else. So anyways, let me jump in here to chat. Uh-oh, looks like we're missing, uh, we're losing Mika M. I understand though, man. Um, comment from Mika M. We'll go to sleep and dream about this new place now. Oh man, thanks so much, I appreciate that. Sleep well, Mika M, and we'll see you soon. And yes, another comment from Kirk Chechuk. Yes, absolutely, self-sustaining. Yes, we, we absolutely try to be self-sustaining. Um, another cool program with the land here. There's tons of farmland around here. They have a really cool program where if you're a farmer or um, a, a, a budding farmer, you're trying to you know get into farming or gardening or whatever the case is, but you don't have your own land, well, you can fill out some paperwork, and if you're lucky... They'll just let you lease some land here for really, really cheap, and you can grow your crops on this land. So there's a lot of cool progressive programs that are all you know, kind of surrounding this place, Green Bank Farm. So I'm really, I'm really proud to be a part of it because I'm a very progressive person, personally. I, I believe in being progressive, always looking forward. You know, I think we can always do better. So with that said, let me jump one last time into chat and see what I've missed, and we're probably going to wrap up. Oh dear. 
Yes, a comment from Dragon Lair. Uh, if I come out, I'll never go back south. <laughs> well, Dragon Lair, you are welcome to come up and visit. And guys, you, you have an open invitation. Just let me get the place done. <laughs> and then you guys can come on up in a Winnebago or something like that. And we'll, we'll play some hip hop and eat ice cream in here. Well, I don't know. Who knows? We'll have a pajama party or something weird. We'll, we'll get weird. Anyway. Mika M, sleep well. Ah, yes, we got a comment from Araminta. I see 4R4 Mint 4. Guys, sell, say hello to Mrs. Redfish Bluefish. That is my wife in chat right there. Um, and Mrs. Redfish Bluefish rightfully points out, not to mention awesome internet access there thanks to Whidbey Telecom. Yes, guys, here's some other cool stuff. I reached out to the local provider here and placed an order, and I was able to get business class business fiber drops directly into this location and i have one gigabit per second down one gigabit per second up via fiber optic so it's pretty cool i'm really happy about the bandwidth capabilities of this place so um, i was just going to ask that jeff chambers thank you so much um i was hoping that the stream looked a little bit better than normal um i've been having some problems uh, with my internet, which is Comcast, um, at my house, which is in Freeland, Washington. It's, the, it's, it's just seven miles south of, of Green Bay, which is where I am. And we have some really weird internet problems there, wireless problems, kind of strange things. And I'm out here on Whidbey Telecom, one gig down, one gig per second up, with actually not a very good access point, wireless access point. And I haven't dropped my wireless camera at all. So I think a lot of the problems that I was actually having out of the house were internet related more than anything else. So, whoops. Comcast, you better step up your game, son. Anyway, guys, it looks like we have 32 people in here and I'm not sure how many thumbs ups. I, I don't have my uh, monitoring thing. Uh, it looks like we have 31 likes and 31 concurrent viewers right now. According to what I'm seeing, 77 playbacks and blah, blah, blah. I don't know what that stuff means. Anyway, guys, I really appreciate you coming by and hanging out. And I hope, 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 hope that you will give me just three more minutes of your time so I can send you off the right way that we always like to do here at Redfish Bluefish. Please, please, if you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. You know, like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff that people always parrot on about. So with that said, oh, hey, Susan for SLC Aquatics. I didn't know you were in here. Thanks so much for coming by, Susan. And Lisa Perez. Hey, Lisa, how's it going? Oh, Lisa, you're very welcome for the plans. And Lisa, I did get that email like right before I went live. That's why I didn't write you back. So consider this your email reply. You're very, very welcome for the, for the plant cuttings. I sent out five or six packages to people. I have one more to send out. Um, and I have a, a large package um, to send out as well. So anyway, guys, please give me two, two and a half minutes more of your time. Let me send you off the right way with a little video message like we like to do here at Redfish Bluefish. It's the one you've seen before, but, you know, it makes me happy. It makes me happy to send you guys off with a little touch of nature. Stand by and... Uh, we will be seeing you back here next Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific. That's 11 p.m. Eastern right here at Redfish Bluefish. Take care, guys. We'll see you again soon.